Hi everybody, this is Matthew Pose with Pose Acoustics and in this video I'm going to talk about something that is, in a sense has like nothing to do with home theater and yet has everything to do with home theater. Um, and that is the HVAC system. So I've talked before about my dislike of the uh, wall mount AC unit. So as many of you know, often when we're doing home theaters we end up getting stuck in a situation where we need to dedicate uh, cooling and heating potentially to the dedicated theater room. One of the most common ways that I see that done is often with these um, mini HVAC systems that have a head that you mount on the wall. And then um, you can, they're called mini splits. And you can take the mini split and you mount it and you put the other out. They're very easy, they're fairly inexpensive. So there's a number of problems with those that I don't like. One of them is that the filter that's in it typically is a fairly poor quality filter that's right inside the unit. Um, the head that you're mounting. They're also pretty noisy, so even the super quiet ones from companies like Panasonic are still typically in the 25 to 30 dBA range. Um, some of them are a little bit quieter than that, but I don't know that I've ever seen anything quieter than 20 dBA. And when you get into spaces that are these you know, well-executed, dedicated home theaters, that is noisy enough to actually elevate the noise floor of the room, potentially at least, um, or be on par with it. You really want things like that to be below, you know, one of the things that happens is that the fan noise from the projector is not gonna be the same, but it's gonna have a, a overlapping, we'll call it, spectrum with the HVAC. It's gonna be 20, 25 dBA. Then you've got the HVAC, it's 20, 25 dBA. It's additive, and so the noise gets louder in those frequencies, and it's very audible. So you really want this to be like a good 10 decibels below the ambient noise of other things in the room, or if it is going to be the noise floor of the room, and in really, really good home theaters, the HVAC actually will probably be the noise floor of the room, you really want that to be more like 10 or 15 dBA if possible. You can't do that with a mini split that's got the head mounted in the room like that. So my preference is that, actually I like mini splits. They're very efficient and they work well. Fan noise on some of them is pretty low. And what you can do is you can actually get, instead of getting a ductless mini split, you get a ducted mini split. <clears throat> Those then mount somewhere remotely. Uh, they can often they can go into the attic and then you can just have an access panel to it or if you have an equipment closet, they can go into the equipment closet and then you duct in using either acoustic duct or ducted uh, mufflers um, and everything needs to be spec'd correctly. Which brings us to the next issue. Typically homes will have an HVAC system that's specified at potentially less than one air change an hour. And that's okay, I mean, it's not great, but it's really okay. Places like restaurants or hospitals are often spec'd higher. So obviously medical facilities are often spec'd at the highest end, and they're more like eight air changes an hour. We really want our home theaters to be at the high end, like five or six air changes an hour. It helps to reduce dust. Um, it also helps to make sure that the air stays cool. You don't get stagnant air. And so what you wanna do is you wanna be changing that air. What, what that means is not that the air comes from like outside and goes inside, it's actually the air in the theater is run through the ducting system, runs through, is conditioned, meaning moisture is removed. And you know, in the case of the filters, dust is removed and heat is pulled out. That then goes through and comes back into the room. And you want that, let's just say for the sake of argument, around six times an hour, five or six times an hour is a good number. And you want that to be really quiet. So how do you do that? Well, the first is that you're gonna end up needing a higher spec HVAC system than you might normally do. So I have a one and a half ton system that's dedicated to my office and my theater. That's all it does. And it's specified enough that if I run the fan continuously, which of course is a common mode in an HVAC system, I can get at about five or six air changes an hour. I then had to spec, of course, the ducts to be the right size for that. So I have two supplies and then I have a jumper for a return, which is the same as a dead bend. Um, and uh, it's got a muffler in it. Um, the jumper is 14 inches in diameter, and there's one of those. And then there's actually a second one in the closet which shares air. And then in the theater space, there's two 12 inch diameter uh, supplies. And that's it's 12 inches after the acoustic insulation that lines it. Uh, which means it's actually thicker than that. So I believe it is 14 inches as well. Um, and then that doesn't have a muffler. I, I didn't end up doing that because of the long run. I would have been nice to do it, but um, the long run of, of lined duct material was okay. Um, and then there's a head on it that's got ducting material. It's made of, of duck board. Um, 
there's actually a couple sections. There's, a, there's also a, uh, we'll call it a plenum that branches out that is an acoustically designed one made of duckboard as well. So all of this was done to ensure the best possible quality, um, uh, air movement, sound quality, everything. Uh, and it, it was really different than normal. So in a residential setting like this, the standard would have been six inch supply duct. And it wouldn't have been acoustic. It would have been just six inch flex duct, standard cheapo stuff, would have come off of a much smaller plenum. And what that would have done is that would have had a very high air velocity. And so air would have been noticeable. You would have heard the air movement as it goes through. It wouldn't have been able to address the fan noise. And we wouldn't probably have had enough air turnover in the room. Um, the original spec also was for a one ton unit for this area. We upped it to one and a half tons to give it the extra capacity. Um, knowing that it was going to be running more and that there was going to be a higher heat load caused by the projector and all of the equipment that's in the equipment closet. So that was important. So then um, uh, when the guy came in to do it and I specified this, he actually originally was really pushing to do eight inch duct because he's like, it's hard to run 14 inch duct in your ceiling. There just isn't a lot of space between the rafters to do that. Uh, this is going to be a real pain. In fact, one of the issues was everything had to run straight into the theater and then it had to run straight out here and then all the turns would have to be handled up into the attic area above the office that I'm in right here. It couldn't be done in the theater because of the difference between the way the two rooms were constructed. And that was a big pain for him. He didn't like that. But we ended up redesigning everything such that what I have are two supplies that run straight that as I said are 14 inches in diameter and they actually run on top of each other because there, there was enough height to do that. It's the, the attic space is pretty big and it goes over and one they're kind of in line with each other. So one drops down over the seating and one drops down in front of the seating. Now typically I would have liked to have done it a little bit differently. So typically what we would do is do all the supplies in the front, all the returns in the back or all the you could do it the other way around. It's not a huge deal. And the reason for that is it helps to cause the air to circulate in this way, kind of like a turning motion, if you will, of the air. In my case, that wasn't really feasible. Um, there was no way to run the supplies to the corners like that. They had to go in the middle. It was the only place where we had the space to run it. And so what we've done is make it so that the air is doing this instead, but it's still circulating and you're still getting what you need. So the motion, as I said, is more of like a, this kind of a turning instead of a this way around the whole room. Either works okay, as long as you can keep the noise down. So for HVAC, a couple of things to target. You wanna be keeping the air velocity at a very low level. You're gonna to wanna to figure out the cubic feet of the room, and then you need to figure out how much per minute air circulation you have. So in a room like mine, which is roughly, I think it's around uh, 3,200 cubic feet, something like that, you need about 3,500 cubic feet of um, or not, I have that wrong, sorry, 350 cubic feet of air circulation per minute. And that gives you enough to get up into that five or six air turnovers in an hour. So that's kind of like how you want to target that. And then to keep air velocity at a level that is not all that noticeable, I would say you're going to be targeting somewhere between on the lowest end, 10 inches in diameter at the upper end, 15, 16 inches in diameter of ductwork. Anything smaller than that probably is gonna have noticeable air noise. And so if you're planning to put in like eight inch and that was your up spec, it probably isn't enough. Um, 10 inch is enough better. I've done that before where it's not all that noticeable and it tends to work okay, especially if you have a bunch of them. And so the air velocity can be low on a per uh, supply basis. But really 12 inch to 14 inch is what I've typically done in most systems and it seems to be the best. And then as I said, acoustic duct is best. Um, that really can help out a lot. If you can't do acoustic duct and you have to use flex duct, a couple of things to keep in mind, flex duct lets all the sound out. Flex duct doesn't do anything to block sound. It is basically thick trash bag material with fiberglass insulation, that's it. And in fact, in the acoustic version, they've perforated the inner plas plastic layer so you're not getting any sound blockage at all. It goes right out immediately. In a place like this, there's nothing above me. So the only place for that sound to go out to was this room. And that's not, it, it's a concern. And we've done things to mitigate that, including that there's actually not flex duct right here. There's only flex duct inside of the area there that's all fully insulated. Um, but 
typically flex duct is not ideal. It's used a lot because it's simple, but not only is it not great for air, so it actually can cause problems because it's hard to get the right uh, bends. But in fact, you don't want to bend with flex duct if you can avoid it. It's really best to have flex duct run straight and then actually use turning vanes inside of a 90 degree or whatever it is bended. Uh, it's like a plenum box sort of, or an expansion box that has the turning vanes built into it. That's the best way to reduce noise. It's just more expensive. So anyway, uh, solid duct, steel duct is best. Semi-rigid, next best, and then flex duct is kind of the worst. Um, enlarging the diameter though helps to mitigate a lot of these issues. So if you can go much, much larger, that's better. And as I said, oversupply and over return the room because you, you actually want way more air turnover than is typical. So hopefully this is helpful um, in kind of how I handle HVAC and the issues. As I mentioned, I think people under spec this a lot and often go with simple approaches like those uh, uh, ductless mini splits. So I don't recommend that. Oh, there is one last thing that I didn't mention. So let me just mention also fresh air. So these theaters get pretty nasty. Uh, if you think about it, it's a dark room. They tend to get warm because, especially if you don't have enough a a AC in there. And they can get moist if they're not, again, if they're not conditioned properly. And so that's a great way to get mold growth. And so it's not unheard of, especially in basement theaters that aren't properly done, for there to be mold problems. So one of the things we've learned over the years is that we really need to be very careful with how we specify these. So the high air turnover helps with that. It ensures proper conditioning, that the air, uh, the heat is being pulled out of that air, that any moisture buildup is being pulled out of the air. But you do wanna add some fresh air in. The air gets stale and having some fresh air makeup helps. And so typically we like about 10% fresh air makeup added in just to this part of the system. In my case, the way that's done is you can't see it, but I'm pointing it this way. The HVAC system that's in the office that supplies the theater in the actual um, plenum box that's used for the uh, intake side of things, the return side of things, is a steel duct that goes out to the outside with a damper on it. And that is my fresh air makeup. And then the percentage is adjusted by how you adjust the damper. So you want something like that. And that's another problem with the ductless mini splits is they often don't have any fresh air makeup at all, or it needs to be added in some way. It can be added. It's not an impossible thing, but it's, it's tricky to do. With the ducted ones, what you do is you just run the mini splits return side into a plenum. And then when it goes into the plenum, you just add into that uh, it doesn't have to be a lot. I mean, a six inch pipe potentially is more, or a four inch pipe even, to the outside is more than enough to give you what you need for that 10% fresh air makeup. You always wanna consult an HVAC expert. So I'm giving you advice, I'm not an HVAC expert based on what we specify and like to see, but then you need the HVAC expert to also be a part of it. The problem you're gonna run into is they're gonna push back a bit because it's extra work for them, and they may not wanna do it this way. So yes, you need them to help you. And ultimately, they're probably the ones who have to install a lot of this stuff. But you do want to make sure you're pushing a bit and saying that these rooms need to have more air turnover than normal, that this should be treated more like a commercial space than a residential in that regard, that there's going to be a higher heat load than normal. And you may actually want to explain that to them or even calculate it out. Because the BTU output of all the amplifiers, the processor, the projector, the video player, etc., is actually very substantial, much more than people often realize. And that adds up and needs to be accounted for. Um, and then as I said, some fresh air makeup is pretty important. That's something that often gets neglected. It really shouldn't be. So hopefully this is helpful. Subscribe to my channel so you can get more of this. And uh, I think you'll enjoy these videos. Thanks.